Today, we are discussing a concept called knowledge distillation, where we train a smaller model called the student model using a larger pre-trained model known as the teacher. We will see an example using PyTorch. In the example, both the student and the teacher models will be neural networks. Of course, the teacher model will be more complex and the student model will be simpler. The idea is that the student model will learn from the soft probabilities that the teacher model provides. Knowledge distillation combines the traditional loss which compares the student's predictions to actual levels with a new type of loss that measures the similarity between the student and the teacher's output. There is a temperature parameter that softens the probability distribution. There is an alpha parameter that balances between the two losses. Now a question is, when do you need such a knowledge distillation using teacher-student models? Consider a situation where you need a heavy neural network to predict something. You need the model on an edge device like Jetson Nano or even smaller device. Let us say that the model you have is so big that the edge device cannot handle it. Then you will teach a smaller student neural network that will mimic the behavior of the teacher model. Of course, the situation must be such that the smaller model cannot learn well from the actual levels, but learns better when the soft probabilities of the output of the teacher are provided. There are several knowledge distillation processes, but today we only focus on the one that incorporates the teacher's soft prediction probabilities into the student model's learning. Let us discuss the Python code. Of course, I have provided the Google Colab link to this code in the description section. In this video, I will use my local computer and the GPU. I wrote a function that creates a dataset containing 1000 rows and 20 features, 20 dimensions. The dataset will have eight clusters. We will be using the clusters as classes. We are using a classification problem to build teacher and student neural network models. Here is a TSNE plot of the dataset. We are drawing the 20 dimensional data points into a two dimensional TSNA plot. The colors represent the class labels. I made sure that there were overlaps between these Gaussian regions of the clusters to make the classification problem a bit harder for a small neural network. Only a more complex neural network can accurately perform this classification task. The idea is that our teacher neural network will be complex and will be able to classify well. The student model will not be able to learn much from this dataset without the help of the teacher model. If we train the student model with the soft probabilities provided by the teacher model, then the student model will be able to mimic the behavior of the teacher model. Okay, we have the data now. We check a few things and we check for availability of a GPU. If GPU is not available, then it will fall back to CPU. Of course, the code will run slow with CPU. Reduce the number of epochs later in the code for training if you are using a CPU. Otherwise, the execution time will be quite high. Anyway, the code is suitable for both GPU and CPU. Here is the teacher model. This neural network has more than 200,000 parameters. I played with it and made sure that it could classify the data with high accuracy. The final layer is directly returning the logits. That is, we'll be computing the soft probabilities during the training iterations if required. Here is the student model. It has a similar pattern of layers as the teacher model, but the number of layers is lesser than the teacher neural network. In addition to the student model, I have written another neural network named simple, which is exactly the same neural network as the student. 
And with the student, I will train the simple network. The difference between the training of the simple network and the student network will be that the simple network will not see the teacher network's output. The simple network will only see the data for training. The student network, on the other hand, will learn from both the data and the output of the teacher model. The student model should learn more than the simple model. If not, then there is no point in keeping the heavy-duty teacher model and also there is no point keeping the student model. Let us see. I first train the teacher model with the entire data set. Note that the teacher model is ideally a pre-trained model, so I am trying to make it as good as possible. It does not matter how it is trained, whether it is pre-trained or regularly trained. The main idea is that it must perform super well. I ran it for 2000 epochs. Here is the teacher training loss over the epochs. Looks pretty well. It still has some room for improvement, but we will be fine because I trained it with all the data with the aim to make sure that it performs very well compared to the simple model. For the student model and the simple model, we use the last half of the data with an assumption that these are on a small devices and these two models do not have access to the entire data that was used to train the teacher model. I use five-fold stratified k-fold cross-validation. That is, from the last half of the entire data, 80% will be used for training and 20% will be used for testing. Of course, the teacher model will perform well because it has seen more data and these data points before. But that is not the point. The point is, can the student model perform better than the simple model with the help of learning from the soft probabilities of the teacher model's prediction? Let us see. Our general loss criterion for labels is cross-entropy. As distillation loss, we will use scale divergence loss between the level probabilities of the student and the probabilities provided by the teacher. More on this soon. We train the simple model here. Not much to say, just regular training epochs for classification. Now we are going to the student training, which is slightly more complex. We get the student logits and we get the teacher logits. We convert them to probabilities. Note that we are using log softmax for teacher probabilities, but we are using regular softmax for computing student probabilities. The reason of why we are using two different probabilities will become clear soon. We compute the distillation loss between teacher probabilities and student probabilities using this function criterion distill. Criterion distill is using the Kale divergence loss here. This function Kale divergence loss expects that the first argument is in the log space. This is the reason why we converted the teacher logits to probabilities using log softmax, whereas we converted the student logits using regular softmax probabilities. Hard target loss is the regular loss between the prediction and the labels available. Now the loss for the student model is a combination of hard target loss and the distillation loss. We have a parameter called alpha that balances how much of each will be used. Alpha varies between 0 and 1. If alpha amount is used for hard target loss, then 1 minus alpha will be used for the distillation loss. Alpha equal to 1 means that only hard target loss will be used. That will be equivalent to the simple model. Alpha equal to 0 will indicate complete use of the knowledge distillation. That means only the distillation loss will be used. I used 0.3 for alpha. This variable t 
is the temperature. It is used here to give a stress on distillation. If T is higher, then more importance is given to distillation. But this temperature T is used in another crucial place, which is right here. Both the teacher logits and the student logits are divided by the temperature T. When T is greater than 1, it changes the magnitude of the logits in such a way that the softmax function will soften the probability distribution. The higher the temperature, the closer the output probabilities are to a uniform distribution. This means that the differences between the classes will smooth out. A temperature less than 1 will make the softmax function produce a sharper distribution. This means that the probabilities will tend more towards 0 or 1. The lower the temperature, the more the probabilities resemble a one-hot encoded representation. T equal to 1 will not change the logits before softmax is applied. I used T is equal to 7, which makes the probabilities pretty soft. I found that this value provides a good learning for the student model. This combined loss is then used for students' learning. For the evaluation, we use teacher, student, and simple models so that we can compare the accuracies of all. Here is the overall average accuracies over the five-fold cross-validation. The teacher model has an accuracy of 0.96, which is pretty high, and we know that it will be good because it has seen everything. The simple model's accuracy is 0.53. The student model's accuracy is 0.70, which is quite better than the simple model's accuracy. Note that the simple model and the student model have the same neural network architecture with exactly the same number of parameters. Yes, the student model is performing better because in its loss function, the knowledge of the teacher model was transferred for each training sample that the student model saw. This practice shows that you can construct simpler models to mimic the behavior of complex pre-trained models. Such smaller models can be deployed on edge devices. Knowledge distillation is a concept that has been around for some time, but its prominence and application in deep learning and modern AI has grown significantly in recent years. Of course, I overly simplified the entire process and the construction of the teacher model in a questionable way. This code is strictly for educational purposes and is not designed to handle critical systems. The code only demonstrates the potential of a modern AI technique. See you soon in another video.